Hey guys, Frequent here to go over the new minimal plugin with you, and this one is called Cluster Delay. This was really interesting. It's it's a kind of clever take on your traditional multi-tap delay plugin, but we're gonna get a bunch of additional features. We've got a whole effect suite. We've got all of this sort of tap manipulation, cross feed, send mode, a bunch of quality of life enhancements and extra features that are gonna make this something a little more interesting and fun to use in our process. So yeah, I've, I've actually been enjoying this one a lot. Let's take a look. Before we get too far into this, it's always good to know about this question mark icon here we can click in order to hover over our parameters and get a detailed description of what's going on. Also on our top bar, we have this user profile icon, which will give you details like the version number and your account number. Then we have a preset menu. It'll just allow you to select from these categories. We can load one of these up and listen to it. We also have a save icon. This save icon will allow you to obviously save your current preset. We have a shuffle icon, which will allow us to go between the different presets in these folders randomly. And then we can also go sequentially through the folders using these arrows. Right below the top bar, we have the delay taps and the time knob. The taps determine how many times the sound will repeat, and the time determines how quickly. So if we turn the feedback down all the way here, and then we set some taps, so let's do like three or four, and then we play a sound, you'll hear it repeat that many times, and then stop. And then we get to choose here basically just what the interval is. So if we want to just do like normal grid divisions, we can choose normal, and this will just be like eighth, sixteenth, fourth. We also have triplet, dotted, and then sync is just all of them combined into one knob. And then we have free, and free is just going to allow you to free tune the time in milliseconds. And you can also use these arrows to get between them here. All right, let's take a look at the bottom half of the plugin. Starting at the left, we have the feedback section, and we've got a few things going on here. Remember that feedback is just taking the output and running it back through the delay taps. Higher values on this feedback knob means higher amplitude on the signal being fed back into the delay line. So if we turn this up, we can see the signal being duplicated here a bunch of times. And let's say if we have this at around 33%, then every duplication is going to be one third the volume of the original taps until it decays all the way out. If we have it at 100, it'll just repeat forever and never stop. If we have it at zero, obviously no duplications. So that's feedback. We additionally have this analog button, and this is going to add a sort of analog clipping to this. This is trying to emulate like a, an analog tape recorder. We also get this cross feed option here. And this is interesting. This is actually going to allow us to fade between the left and right channels to have feedback go between each of them. But we don't have any stereo information in this signal right now. In order to introduce stereo, one way we can do that is by using this spread knob. And this is essentially going to offset the left and right taps from each other. Remember, we have two delay lines, one for each speaker. So when we do this, we get a skew on either side. And we can actually just clean offset these and get a stereo delay. So to hear this, let's start with just mono. And then when we offset it, And then if we add this crossfeed in, you can see visually how we're going to move from left to right. Even though it's offset, we're going to take some of the right and push it over to the left and vice versa. So this allows us to get some really crazy stereo movement and interesting rhythms as we kind of cross between these offset signals. It's really cool. on the analog and then our last thing on this section is the sync so the sync is actually going to take this offset value and lock it to the grid so whatever grid division you have defined here it will actually lock the offset quantized to that grid division so we can make this actually perfectly rhythmic to this grid time if we wanted to super cool so that's the feedback section so now let's move into the middle section and this is where we start getting into some features that are truly unique to this plugin 
We're going to start off with just this spacing knob in the middle. In order to see what's going on, I'm going to kill all of the stuff we were doing before, get rid of the feedback. Essentially, what this is doing is it's going to skew all of our delay times to one side or the other. I think it's pretty clear what it's doing visually. And this basically is creating like these exponential rhythms. It's really cool. On the ramp, we have a similar thing, but instead of changing the timing, it's just an amplitude fade. So we can create these sort of swells. Also very cool. Then we have this scatter and this is basically, it's just going to kill every other delay tap on the left and right, which is creating a ping pong. The difference between this and a standard ping pong toggle though, is instead of just having to choose all the way on or off, we can choose an amount. So we can have these become a pseudo ping pong delay where there's just panning instead of it hard panning, it'll soft pan, just create some stereo. So this is really nice. And then we can also go backwards so we can choose if it starts on left or right. So we get a lot more control than a, a, a typical ping pong toggle. Also down here, we've got high pass, low pass, standard, just filters like you'd expect. And then this right here is something I wish all delays had. It's a kill switch. So if we turn some feedback on, let's just turn this on like a hundred feedback and this is just gonna ring out. I just kill it there and it's gone. So this is a really, really good feature. If this ever gets out of hand, you can always just kill the sound really easily. Um, so yeah, with this middle portion, now we can kind of combine this in with our, our rhythmic spread and our cross feed and we can give it a ramp and we can give it some of this spacing. We'll scatter it a bit and then do whatever with this filter let's maybe just leave it up for now and we can immediately just start getting these lush rhythmic sounds very nice um also worth noting we have this snap right here this snap is very similar to the sync and that it's just going to lock this spacing to a rhythmic timing. So if we have both of these on snap and we're in dotted, then now all of this should line up. Or we could turn them off and we could go kind of free with it. tons of options anyways that's the middle part so now our last part here is this right panel and this is the effects panel first thing i'm going to do is just kind of reset a lot of this so we can again see what's happening in our visualizer more easily so let's take a listen to the wobble creates kind of a vibrato effect if we turn this down subtly this is another way we can get sort of that analog tape sound Next, let's check out Diffusion. You're gonna get sort of this interesting uh, reverb sound. This is a dry wet for the reverb and this is a size parameter for the reverb. And then this is a modulation on the decay. You can hear it pitching up and down. Let's listen to this again with lower modulation. We also have chorus, just get a depth and rate. Same for phaser, flanger. But what's interesting about these effects, these allow us to put these effects in the feedback line by clicking this routing right here. And essentially, this is gonna put the effect on before the delay line, if you have it on input. This is going to put it on after the delay line, just like a regular effect if you have it on output. But if you have it on feedback, this is now in the delay line. So whenever you have a feedback cycle, remember the feedback is just coming back and re-entering the delay taps again at a slightly lower volume. 
well, now it's going to also hit this effect and retap this effect every single time. We can hear this easiest with the frequency shifter if we have the feedback on and we shift this up at full mix. You hear it go up every time. This is easier to hear if we do it faster. It's going to tap up every time. It's going to pitch more on top of the last pitch. If we have this on input, doesn't change. Same with output. But input, or sorry, feedback. So we can start putting any of these effects in the feedback line and getting totally different results than we would just having them on before or after. Before we head down to this bottom bar, let's take a look at this ducker. And this is another one of those things that I really wish was in more tailing effect plugins like this. This essentially is a sidechain for our input signal. So if I turn this depth all the way up, now when we play a sound, there's going to be this sort of sweep in after the sound that is our dry signal is done playing, it's going to allow this effect to kind of sweep in afterwards. So now if I play something, we hear it and then that comes in after. It's a little hard to hear, let's turn up the feedback and then also we can turn this time down. This is just controlling how quickly it fades back in after we let go. And it happens the moment I release the MIDI note. Super useful. Uh, you can get all sorts of really interesting dynamic sounds out of this, especially if you hit the notes fast, we can get this sort of like weird pulsing effect. Tons of possibilities with this effect. Um, super underrated feature. I love that. Um, but that's the ducker. Okay, so lastly, let's take a look at this bottom panel here. It's got a few things you're probably familiar with. We've got a dry wet here, which is just a ratio of the dry signal and the delay or the effect. So all the way to the right, we're going to hear only the effect. All the way left, we won't hear any of the effect and any ratio in between. Then we have an output. And again, this is just a volume slider. But the one thing we do get over here is this clipper option. So one click will get us a soft clipper and two clicks will get us a hard clipper. So that's that. I'm going to reset these really quick, just to zero, turn off the clipping, and then turn our volume back up. And then our last knob here, or last section rather, is the input. And again, this is just a gain slider, but this comes with another very clever little feature here, and this is the send mode. And the send mode basically allows us to circumvent a very specific problem that <laughs> is honestly pretty common. So let's say we have some notes here, right? I have three notes and I want this second note to have an effect like this on it that has some sort of tail that goes out over the other sounds. And I want this delay to ring out over this note, but I don't want this note to re-trigger whatever effect. The problem is if I try and do this with dry wet, let's say I automate this so that I want this one to have delay and then I want this one to not, then when this one reaches here, the delay is going to be killed. Stops happening. So if I want it to keep going, I have to let that happen, but then this will re-trigger it again. It sounds like this. So the send mode allows us to get around this basically by, if we enable it here and then turn down this input gain, now we'll still hear our sound. And we only have to send in the signal when we want to hear it. So now we can use this slider here. We can just draw something like this. And then this will put delay on just this sound and 
let it ring out over these sounds without re-triggering the delay again. Like so. Perfect. And this is an amazing feature. I wish more things had this built in. Um, so yeah, that's the send mode. And that is also cluster delay in its entirety. I hope that helps you guys figure it out and I'll catch you in the next one. Appreciate it.